No hitters are fun, right? They're the ultimate sign of dominance from a pitcher and a piece of baseball history that they can take with them forever. There are normally a couple thrown every year, and we even got to see a pair of them during the shortened 2020 season. Every single franchise, with the exception of the San Diego Padres, has at least one no-hitter to their credit. 1990 saw seven no-hitters get tossed during the regular season, and they were thrown by some of the most dominant pitchers of the era. Randy Johnson threw the first of his career, while Nolan Ryan threw his sixth. Dave Stewart and Fernando Valenzuela also notched their only career no-nos that year. The final of those seven no-hitters thrown in the 1990 season was thrown by Dave Steeb of the Toronto Blue Jays on September 2nd, 1990. Steve was one of the original power pitchers that came out of the 80s and was known for his hard fastball and wipeout slider. His no-hitter in September of 1990 was another accolade for Steve in his already magnificent career, but it wouldn't be the first time he flirted with history. He knew the feeling of going out to the mound in the ninth inning when the opposition didn't have a hit on the board. He knew it all too well. He knew about his past failures to close out one of baseball's greatest individual accomplishments, and time after time, he didn't know if he would get another shot at it. Before his eventual no-hitter in 1990, Steve would carry a no-hitter into the ninth inning on four separate occasions and come up short each time. He came a single strike away in back-to-back -back starts to close out the 1988 season with a bad hop and a blooper ruining his chances, and lost a perfect game with two outs in the ninth inning just a year later. When he went out to the mound for the ninth inning on September 2nd, 1990, after holding the Cleveland Indians hitless for the first eight innings, Steve tried to put his past failures behind him and finally get those final three outs after coming up short on four separate occasions to finally achieve baseball immortality. Dave Steve was not only one of the best pitchers of the 1980s, but he was also one of the most durable. He had the second most innings pitched and second most wins of any pitcher in the decade, while throwing the fifth most complete games and tallying the most shutouts during that time. He had the seventh highest ERA plus and seventh most strikeouts during the 80s, while accumulating the highest war by any starting pitcher by nearly 10 wins. His 48.1 war was the eighth highest of anyone during the 80s, behind seven Hall of Fame position players. In an era that lacked quality starting pitching, Steve provided stability and consistency for the Blue Jays rotation. He was a regular at the All-Star Games appearing in six of them throughout the 80s and getting the starts in the 83 and 84 Midsummer Classics. It's not like Steve's greatness was going unnoticed by the writers either, as he was receiving love from the national media and the awards races. When the Cy Young voting came around, he placed in the top 10 three times and received MVP votes twice throughout the decade. He seemed to only improve year after year and was in the middle of a career best season in August of 1985 when the Blue Jays traveled to Chicago to take on the White Sox. His ERA was in the low twos and he was scheduled to oppose a 40 year old Tom Seaver who was fresh off his 300th career win. Steve would prove that he was up to the challenge, turning in the best start of his career and carrying a no hitter into the ninth inning for the first time in his career. Steve towed the rubber at Comiskey Park on August 24, 1985, looking to help the first place Blue Jays in their playoff push. It was evident from the start that Steve had it that day, and he began setting down White Sox hitters with ease. Entering the bottom of the ninth inning, the White Sox had only four runners reach base, three via a Steve walk and one by a Steve throwing error, and it looked like he was about to make history. Ruby Law led off the bottom of the ninth inning for the Sox, and promptly took Steve deep to ruin the no-hitter as well as the shutout. Brian Little followed Law with a solo shot of his own, and before he knew it, Steve was out of the game. He had entered the ninth inning with a no-hitter and a shutout, and lost both in the blink of an eye. No-hitters are tough enough to throw, and taking one into the ninth inning is an extremely rare feat amongst itself. This would be the first of five times that Steve would take a no-hitter into the ninth inning, and it would also be the earliest of those five that he would lose it. It would take a few more years before Steve would get another shot at history. The 1988 season was winding down, and the Blue Jays were a middle-of-the-pack team with no shot at postseason play. Steve took the ball in Cleveland against the Indians on September 24th, and again started to dominate. Through the first eight innings, Steve issued only a pair of walks as he took another no-hitter into the ninth inning. The Indians pushed across their only run of the ball game in the top half of the ninth, so Steve finally had a lead to work with in his attempt to close out his gem. The first two hitters of the ninth went quietly, and Julio Franco stepped up to the plate as the only thing between Steve and history. And yes, it was that Julio Franco, the ageless wonder who had arguably the most iconic batting stance in baseball history. Franco was battling, spoiling three two-strike pitches and taking another to even the count at two before finally putting a ball in play, hitting a sharp ground ball to second base. It looked like this was the final out, as Manuel Lee lined up to field and make the play. Then suddenly, the ball hit the lip of the infield and shot over Lee's head, resulting in the first and only Indians hit of the night. Now, if that's not a crock of bad luck, then I don't know what is. Steve obviously was very upset about losing his no-hitter in that matter, and Julio Franco himself even said that he was out and wanted Steve to get a no-hitter for his effort. Two down in the ninth inning, two balls, two strikes, and Julio Franco, and he hits that ball to Manny Lee. What went through your mind there? Well, uh... That you can repeat. <laughs> well, it wasn't bad. Uh, 
I thought I had it. Uh, I, I saw the ball go by me and it hit the grass and I knew it was right at him. And uh, when I saw it take that second hop, uh, right away I saw it going, going straight up and, and I realized uh, he wasn't going to get it. He deserves a no hitter. I'll give him the credit. I don't think he should have booked a no hitter like that. I was out. Six days later, Steve got the ball again in his final start of the 88 season at home against the feeble Baltimore Orioles. Steve, possibly fueled by his frustration in his previous start, dominated again. When the ninth inning rolled around, Steve had another no-hitter in line and a sizable 4-0 lead to work with. He'd surrender only one walk and one hit batter to that point, but otherwise was flawless in his final start of the year. Once again, he set down the first two batters in the ninth inning and faced Jim Traper with two outs. After quickly falling behind 2-0, Steve rebounded with a pair of strikes to even the count and once again bring himself one strike away from a no-hitter. Traber would flare a soft line drive into right field, just out of the reach of Fred McGriff, once again, spoiling the no-hit bid. Steve would get the next out to give himself back-to-back one-hit shutouts, in which he lost a no-hitter one strike away. While most pitchers would be happy to end their seasons allowing only two hits and no runs in their final 18 innings of work, Steve wasn't. His best two starts of his career were spoiled with a strike to go, and for the third time in his career, fell short of a no-hitter in the final inning. Steve would have to wait less than a year before his next brush with history, this time on the grander scale. Steve's lack of control has made his dominant outings into no-hitters instead of perfect games, but on August 4th, 1989, Steve would have a shot at the ultimate performance by a starting pitcher. He took the ball at home against the big, bad New York Yankees, although the late 80s Yankees were a lot less intimidating. His command was pinpoint, and after eight innings, he had faced the minimum while racking up nine strikeouts, and it looked like there was nothing to stop him. After striking out the first two hitters in the ninth inning, Steve was one out away from a perfect game. He had failed in his three previous attempts at a no-hitter, and his last two came down to the final batter. He quickly fell behind Roberto Kelly 2-0 to begin the at-bat, and then he hung a curveball that Kelly ripped into left field to break up the perfect game. This was now the third straight time that Steve failed to close out history, and the straw that broke the camel's back for this one was Steve Sachs singling home Kelly to take away the shutout. Steve had now lost three no-hitters with two outs in the ninth inning in less than a year, and four total throughout the ninth inning in the course of his career. Imagine being that close to something you've worked your whole life to achieve, only to fall short time after time. Steve would get one last shot at history a little over a year later against those same Cleveland Indians that foiled his no-hit attempt in 1988. On September 2nd, 1990, Steve took the rubber at Cleveland Stadium against the weak-hitting Indians team and right off the bat took pressure off himself. He issued a leadoff walk and the threat of another perfect game was off the table. Steve would walk two more over the next eight innings and for the fifth time in his career had a no-hitter lined up entering the ninth inning. He got two quick outs and was once again faced with that dreaded final hitter. Nerves got to Steve this time around as he walked the hitter on four straight pitches. Jerry Brown stepped up to the plate to challenge Steve as he was one out away from baseball history. Again. He fired his fifth straight ball before getting a strike call to even the count at one. On the next pitch, Brown would loft a lazy fly ball to right fielder Junior Felix. And after five attempts and four failures, Dave Steep finally had his no-hitter. Steve's no-hitter would be the 30th and final shutout of his great career. He'd pitch three more seasons before ultimately retiring after the 1993 season, but would make a comeback in 1998 as a 40-year-old for the Blue Jays. After that 1990 season, he never quite lived up to what he once was, and a string of injuries finally caught up to him and ultimately ended his career. Baseball can be a cruel and unforgiving game. It's based and designed around failure and adversity, and how players react to that adversity is what separates the good from the great. Dave Steep had tried and failed four times at achieving the incredible personal accomplishment of a no-hitter, and he was finally able to get that out and etch his name into the record books. Dave Steep's incredible perseverance and determination to not give up on his quest of a no-hitter, and finally overcome the hump that shows anything can be accomplished through a lot of hard work, some luck, and a lot of patience.